Hi, my name's Dan Gordon. So let's talk about building your personal brand. So first of all, what is it that makes a brand work? Why is it that companies like Apple and Burger King, MailChimp, AT&T, why do they have such strong brands that we know about and we can relate to? You want to think of a brand as a personality. And the way that you identify with people in your world is, is by knowing who they are. In other words, if somebody asks you, hey, what is this person like? You don't start in with how tall they are, the color of their eyes, where they're from. You talk about them on more of a personal level. He's very dedicated to his job. He does a lot of philanthropic work. These are qualities that allow us to get to know someone in a way that just the technical details of their life doesn't. And we don't choose our friends based on the things they can offer us. We choose friends by the satisfaction we get in connecting with them. The people that we choose in our lives enhance our lives. So the, the same is true of brands. Humans are relationship building machines. We are constantly forming connections with the things that we want. We choose the connection that best suits us based on a complex series of emotional responses. And this has nothing to do with logic. It comes down to what we call our gut choice. So brands, and especially brands that are done right, are designed to inspire these emotional responses from their market. This causes their market to begin forming relationships with only their product. Now, once the relationship is formed, the brand no longer has to persuade their market to buy it. They simply continue reinforcing that relationship. So let me give you some examples. Harley Davidson doesn't sell motorcycles. They sell the American ideal of freedom. You're not just buying a form of transportation. You're buying into a community and a mindset. Southwest Airlines. Southwest does not sell air travel. They sell a travel experience that only they can provide. So Southwest created a brand that made people feel connected to their airline as if it was their friend. Starbucks. Starbucks is not a coffee shop. It is your living room away from home where you get to enjoy a special treat. So is there a difference between branding a thing and branding a person? Actually, no. A brand is not based on what the thing is. A brand is based on the unique way in which it shows up in the marketplace. This unique way is the brand's personality. Its personality is what attracts the correct buyers to the brand and thus begins the relationship. It almost wouldn't matter if Harley Davidson sold doorknobs. At this point, it's the brand that carries the emotional attachment, not the product. That's why the method of branding a thing or branding a person is interchangeable. It's all about relationship building based on personality. Without a personality, you do not have a brand. You have a watch, a car, some guy from the 1800s. A brand is a Rolex, a Tesla, Abraham Lincoln. These are products and a person with a definable personality that a market can relate to. By employing the markers of human relationship building, you create yourself as a brand. Now, these people never intended to be brands, but they are because we feel like we have a personal relationship with them even though we don't. But the brand that they left on us isn't so much of what they did, but how they did it. So let's go through the big time group seven steps to personal branding. I'm gonna go through these quick and then I'm gonna explain what they are. The first is spocking it. Second, that's how you roll. Three, who's your crew? Four, through the looking glass. Five, falling in love. Six, the drama. And seven, deployment. So let's take a detailed look at all of these, starting with spocking it. Spocking it is an exercise of listing out all the technical details of what you do to get them out of your system and out of the way. Why? Because brands have nothing to do with that. For instance, Southwest Airline doesn't talk about the safety record of their airline. They're all about building the relationship. Two, that's how you roll. This is where we examine how you do what you do in the wholly unique way in which you are doing it. This is your way that no one else can duplicate. When United Airlines came up with TED, their version of Southwest Airlines, it failed. And why? 
because they couldn't duplicate the quality, the personality of Southwest. Three, who's your crew? This is where we determine your markets. Your primary market are those who are best served by your unique style of product delivery. These are the people who love what you do in the way that you do it. They wouldn't take any substitution. Your secondary market, those who may or may not partake in your offering. It's not your core audience, but it's a solid market that still creates income. And third, and oddly enough, the hater market. We want to know the people who don't like you, who think you're a fraud. We want to make sure we know who those are, so your brand is constantly pushing them away. For instance, Rolex is not trying to figure out how to capture the hippie market. Number four, through the looking glass. This is critical. You want to go to where your clients are, turn around and look at your business from their perspective. What do my clients want? What's important to them? Here's the key. They aren't interested in learning about what you think is so important that they need to know. Their only concern is how what you do can benefit them the most. Falling in love. This is where we examine the deepest levels of emotional fulfillment that you provide for your primary market. When someone buys a Tesla, they aren't just buying a mode of transportation. They're making a statement about themselves. That Tesla driver feels important, and that's the emotional fulfillment that he's looking for. Six, the drama. So here's where you write the dramatic story of how you triumphed, beat the odds, and came to provide this amazingly wonderful and unique service to the world. The most fascinating part of any superhero movie is what? The origin story, how they came to be. In the drama, you're creating your origin story. And who's going to see your drama? Nobody. This is a reference just for you in building your brand. And finally, deployment. This is the strategy of putting your brand out to the world in a perfect, unbroken chain of words, graphics, and media that can be expressed both online and in person. Once you go through these seven steps, you'll be looking at what you do and how you do it in a way you've never experienced. You will have created what we call the brand story. Now, how do you know if you've got your personal brand down? Well, let's go through your branding checklist. Have you determined the qualities that you deliver within your product that your competition simply can't do? Do you know who the people are that see the value in how you do it rather than just seeing what you do? Have you determined the market that isn't right for you, the ones you want to push away? Do you know the deep emotional satisfaction that you're providing for your customers? The thing that has nothing to do with the product. Do you have a unique and captivating story that you can tell about your process? And finally, to really know if you're doing your brand correctly. When you share your brand, are people intrigued by it? If they aren't, chances are you're still talking about the technical details. Go back and rework the seven steps. So let me give you the five ways to boost your brand engagement because it isn't enough just to have a brand. If you build a powerful engine and it just sits there, what's the point? We got to put that thing in a car. Number one, tell emotional stories. Companies like Coke and Apple have proven that emotional storytelling is key to brand vitality. You can tap into the wiring that makes human beings light up by telling stories that inspire, make us smile, and touch us deeply. Two, learn from your audience. Look, if you don't know what your audience cares about, then they're not gonna have a strong engagement with your brand. You wanna watch how your audience interacts with your online properties. Do research, seek out industry studies. Do Google searches after Google searches. Look into research firms that provide industry studies about your market. Or now with the website SurveyMonkey, you can actually buy an audience that you can survey. Doing research about your audience has never been easier. Three, look for a real-time trend. In 2015, there was this whole online conversation where people said a dress was gold and white or black and blue. Now, the Salvation Army picked up on this trend and used it in a powerful ad to talk about domestic violence. Now, they leveraged the conversation that was already happening to call attention to a topic that was relevant to their brand, spousal abuse. Four, use only custom content. Look, people know when they're reading something, if it's rehashed, rehomogenized, regurgitated content that lives somewhere else. You absolutely need to write your own custom content in your voice 
that in every paragraph is expressing a quality of your brand that just doesn't exist with the generic content that's out there on the internet. And the fifth way to boost your brand engagement, champion bold initiatives. Scour the internet for obscure stories where people are doing all kinds of bold things. Then align your brand with those initiatives. Don't just post the article on Facebook and say, we think this is great. Get involved, contribute, buy a piece of technology that they need and send it to them. Ask them to take a picture of it, post that show that your brand is all about human involvement. So finally, I wanna talk about how you use your personal brand in marketing yourself. After all, what's the point of doing all this work if it's not generating income for you? So there's four things you wanna focus on. The problem, the solution, why you, and making the sale. The problem is whatever your market is struggling with. And you always wanna show up as the one who understands the problem in a way that most people don't. You want your market to feel like you appreciate the struggle that they're facing. Solution, you want them to feel that you're very familiar with the types of solutions that can resolve their problems. And more than that, you're happy to help them with it. Now, why you? Well, simply put, you're the expert. You not only understand the problem and the solution, but you've had a tremendous amount of experience dealing with these problems, dealing with them successfully. And not only that, but you're a thought leader around these specific issues. And finally, making the sale. This is the hardest part for a lot of people. I think we all struggle with the fear of rejection and asking for money is the ultimate moment where they're either gonna say, yeah, I wanna work with you or no, I don't. But let me make it easier on you. You wanna have a simple way for your clients to begin working with you. You wanna have a simple way to give them an instant quote for your services. You have a package deal or you have a landing page where they can easily sign up. The less you hem and haw and hesitate on closing the deal, the more confidence they'll have in you and the more likely they are to buy. I'm always happy to talk to people further about branding and promoting themselves. It's what I do, it's what I'm passionate about. You can check us out online at thebigtimegroup.com. Call me directly at 818-613-1984 or send me an email, dan at thebigtimegroup.com. Thank you 